Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Thank you guys, of course, for continuing the journey of Ben 10 Ultimate Alien. This is Season 2, Episode 26. Yes, 26. Of course, we're not another title until I get into the episode. Now, fair warning, just want to say this up front. I am getting sick. I'm hoping that it doesn't get worse and hoping I don't cough a lot. We'll see what happens. I'll try to, you know, cut around then if I do. But uh, just fair warning, that's my voice sounds a little off. At least for me, it sounds a little off. So, yeah. Anyways, last week's episode was intense. I love that episode so much and the fact that it showcased how much dedication you know it was negative dedication that charm caster not charm master <laughs> that, that will never go away me actually calling her charm master how much dedication time she had especially right now at the very end sacrificing 600,000 souls including the trio Ben Gwen and Kevin to bring her father back and then for him to say no I don't want to be here because this is how you brought me back. No. And he went back up, and then the deal was uh, basically undone that she was trying to do. And this was her whole dedication. Since the beginning of her first appearance back in Classic, this is where she's always wanted to end up in terms of doing all of this work, learning all these spells, doing all this because of trying to bring her father back. It's pretty emotional, right? And she killed the trio. It didn't really click in my head until as we're getting into it, I'm like, oh shit, she killed them for like a couple of minutes, like officially. And it goes to show like she went down this path and her father was so, so disappointed in her. I thought it was a very powerful moment and I really enjoyed the journey getting to that and the revelation of what she's been trying to do this whole time and this is the whole point. It was kind of hinted at the last time we saw her, of course, when they went into this magical world and everything. But you get what I'm saying, to have this moment finally come like finally come finally happen whatever i can't even talk today too <laughs> sorry um it's it's been crazy so i cannot wait to see what happens next uh hopefully another good episode um we're getting closer and closer to the end of ultimate alien it's kind of crazy but yeah so anyways let's get into now episode 26 let's go oh okay he's back who is afternoon miss if you don't mind i was wondering if i could maybe get your autograph most what? of my fans are teenage girls. How do you figure, Captain? She's a celebrity? Maybe the biggest star in the world. How's my favorite celebrity? I can't keep pretending like this, Carl. After today, you won't have to. <laughs> a bomb? What did you say? In only a few hours, Captain Nemesis lives again. Oh, wait. That's that guy? It did not click until he said Captain Nemesis. So this is that guy who was jealous of Ben and everything. And is that the same girl that invited Ben to that party or whatever with him? I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, okay. Is ugly really a word? Catch a falling star. Ooh, I like that title. Mm. Really good at her. Maybe she wasn't as lucky. She's an innocent girl. No, it's all planned. She's still alive. We've got to help her. It's Jennifer! <laughs> but we'll be together. Yes. That yes. Destroy Ben Tennyson. But why can't we just go? Feels like she's being forced yeah. against her will or something. Whoa. I've seen you on the news. I bet you have. Right. right. Anyway, we want to ask you a few questions about your daughter. We're trying to help your daughter. Yeah, I'm trying to see me an alien. Well, aliens gonna turn into for her. You oh. Need a sore. Satisfied. Lift her house up. Mm-hmm. I thought you liked helping people. Yeah. How long can you hold that up there? She was 14 when she left home to be on that TV show. We're done here. Suit yourself. Last question. Do you have anything of Jennifer's I could borrow? Nice meeting you, alien boy. Mm. <laughs> Problem solved. No oh. one will recognize me now. Oh, they probably will. Captain Nemesis was never quite as famous as you. Careful. They're not there now. Nobody home. They must have knew you were coming. Checked out. I'll stay here in case they show up. Careful. He has his stuff or whatever. Hey, Gwen, check this out. Not Gwen. Oh shit. Come on, Ben. Damn. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. You're going back to prison. Never. Clockwork. Clockwork. Okay. Clockwork. I like the design of clock. Oh shit! Oh 
shit. Okay. All right. I've never seen this happen before. Oh. What? That was weird. Now I'm a wanted man. If we're going to a Luke Tennyson, I have to change make sure his face. No one me. Are you not figuring it out? He's going to change his face. Well, can you do it? Wake up. I've never seen him knock out be still being an alien. No. By the time I came back, oh, wow. he was already gone. What kind of doctor is a DPM? That's uh, the weird part. I know I'm one to talk. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Like something died in here. Is he dead? Was oh, shit. Hold up. Yes, we're pausing again. Was that guy dead? Like, did... They show a dead body. I think they just showed, even though we saw last episode, you know, their souls were taken. Wow, dude. The only thing I need is to get to Nemesis Corporation. Is his hands wrapped because they but took away his uh, fingerprints? I am not asking your opinion. You have new fingerprints. You have a new I figured. Mm -hmm. You can have a new life. I have to get him first. He took Good luck. Me. Everything. Oh. You folks okay? No. Oh, shit. We're just seeing murder in this episode. We're just seeing straight up murder. She's losing touch with herself. So he's She's... brainwashing her? Yeah, it Not felt exactly. like that way. Well. You ever heard of Stockholm Syndrome? Jennifer is a train wreck. Yes, she is. Yeah, unfortunately. She visited him almost every day. She sure did. She was obsessed with him. Nesmith again. He used the gauntlet yep. from his old armor. Prison guards, the limo driver, Dr. Purgis, Straight murder. Guy over yeah, there. murder. Look what he did to them. Nesmith doesn't care who gets hurt as long as he gets exactly. what he wants. Mm -hmm. But what does he want? Good luck. They try to take my company away from me, but I won't let them. I got something. Yep. It's weak. We're but... going down the basement somewhere. Oh. Pulled some stitches. No. Oh shit. Uh, stop him before he gets in that thing. Oh, shit. I'll get you out of here. Wow. I know. Now get to work. Needle again, okay. He's eating, yep. Oh shit. He's not gonna use his armor? It's right there. Oh. I okay, I should have known she was gonna get in that. Shit, okay. It's, it's even more impactful that she's in the suit. She's taking the shit out of him, dude. She can't do it. She can't do it. She was gonna choose him. What? Shorting it out. Oh. They're going to put me in prison again. No, we can still. Wow. You love me. You let him go. I say. Mm. Keep your mouth shut. I was not prepared for how dark this show was going to be because there was straight up murder in this episode. Straight up murder by Nesmith. And at first it didn't click that this was that character. Was it Captain Nemesis or whatever his hero name? But. We're going to go with Nesbeth. I have to have the voice cast pulled up here just to make sure I get the character names uh, correctly. Um, I was not prepared, first of all, to see him again. And Jennifer, who I – that was the girl that was the, uh, you know, celebrity or whatever um, in uh, movies and stuff. And I think at one point she dated Ben or went on to dates, and then she invited him to that party, which had Nesbeth there. Straight up murder. The doctor, the guy who was driving the truck – and we actually, we actually saw the body of the doctor in that freezer. And he was he murdered other people because when the explosion went out, technically, with her bringing that bomb, it killed people. So technically, she, she murdered people as well in the episode. But it was really him just murdering people. Insane. And then he even changed his face, too, to try to start this new life. But he had to kid Ben. Because that was the changing point for him, right? That was the thing that turned everything around is Ben in terms of his whole life came crashing down because of Ben Tennyson. So no matter what, 
he's like, yeah, you're, you're my, you're my, you're my new life, Jennifer. I love you, da, 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 but I gotta go after Ben. Pretty intense episode. No Kevin. Uh, he was mentioned a couple of times, but no Kevin in the episode, which I thought was interesting, but I think maybe they're thinking as well. We have Nesbeth and Jennifer, so we need to have maybe just Gwen who can locate them and to be a part of the action sequences. And but because maybe if Kevin was there, then maybe the whole final act, the final you know action scene where she gets in the the big looks like a Hulkbuster Iron Man suit or whatever, um, and then there's the fighting and all that. I think if Kevin was there, I think it would have been it would have went down and um, the fight would have ended way sooner than it did. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Probably wouldn't have been as emotional because you have her getting in the suit and everything instead of him. Because I'm waiting for him to get into the suit. And he keeps like fighting back and everything. Um, they address an interesting point in the episode. I'm not sure how much is going to be included in the reaction, but I definitely want to address this here. They make a point where it's after the guy in the truck is killed. There's cops in the scene, ambulances or whatever, but the guy's dead. Um, and Ben's like, look, I'm used to aliens and powered beings. I want to take over the world and all this stuff. I get it. But Nesbeth, I mean... He's he's murdered this like they, they they're not saying this exact words but like Ben's basically saying in this own way because it's not really tied towards Moore's kids so you can't really say certain words um, and they skirt around that a little bit um, <coughs> sorry um, murdering this person this person this person the truck driver the doctor uh, you know like what like basically saying this is a whole new level like I don't even know what is going on here. And Gwen says, you don't have to be an alien. You don't have to be, you know, this to be a monster. It's a fair point. And I think this was hitting Ben on another level than normal because it's a human villain. We don't really see many of them. We've seen a couple, but not to the extent of, like, what he's doing here, straight murder. It's not really been seen that much in the show. It's been mostly alien beings, powered beings. But in this instance, it's just some guy who had armor, kind of like an evil Iron Man. I think it's a fair comparison. And he goes down this path, and he starts murdering in front of Jennifer, and she, and they mention the Stockholm Center and everything, so, like, literally she feels like, yeah, he did all this stuff to me, but I love him, and I, and I want to be with him, and this is all I have, because I feel empty inside. Because when they go to talk to her mom, which, of course, that whole sequence is kind of ridiculous, but she's just being an ass. Telling Ben, hold the trailer up, da, 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 I'll answer questions. Saying, well, she left when I was when she was 14 and never seen her again. So, you know, she, but my question is, did she have a bad childhood? Is that why she ultimately left home? Because normally when, you know, it, at least in terms of situations, when you become famous and everything and you're a celebrity and you're rich, because somebody like Jennifer is pretty rich, right? I would assume you help out. Your family, especially your parents, if you are so inclined, if that's the route you want to go, if you had, so maybe she had a really bad childhood. They really didn't address it too, too much, but maybe that's where the disconnect was because she literally was saying at one point, you're all that I have. I have nothing without you. Like, so implying there's no family, right? There's no real friends. And I think that's kind of a, a basically mirroring Hollywood in a sense, because there's a lot of fakery in Hollywood. Like, there's people that are probably genuine friends with each other in the movie business and everything, but a lot of the times it's like you're making friends on the set and then it's kind of like it just goes away and then that's pretty much it. Like, there's no real... There, there are true connections, but maybe for her, there was never was a true connection. So she really didn't have anybody else. At one point was taking Ben on dates and everything, and then this party, everything happened with uh, Nesmith, and then... Here she is now going to see him every single day and helped him escape and all this shit. Pretty intense. Um, I, I, I find it interesting that we're going down this dark path of seeing death in the show when it's been really skirted around quite a bit um, before. And we literally had last episode in production order because I'm watching a production order. Not sure how they went in airing order. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um that we saw literal beings, including the trio, get murdered while their souls are taken out of their bodies for the trade-off with um, Charm Caster. And showcased, hey, you know, 
we're we're showing straight up murder and we, and we saw her murder uh the guy who used to run the magic realm or whatever we saw that and then now we see in this episode where it's off camera but you see the flash of light because she literally holds his gauntlet up to the guy in the truck and murders him and then kills the doctor that changed his face and then Ben was referencing other people that he murdered. So, pretty brutal shit. Pretty brutal shit this show is doing. It's quite surprising. But, personally, um, <coughs> sorry, I think it, I think it's, I think it's good, right? Because classic has its own tone and had its own kind of vibe. Alien Force and Ultimate Alien has gone darker in some instances. And I'm not saying, okay, let's start showing murder straight up. But we've technically been seeing that kind of shit and, and bodies. So it's going to show that the show is maturing. Now, I'm not sure if that means when, once we get to Omniverse, we're going to be kind of going that same route where we're seeing things like this. But maybe we are. My voice at the end cut off because coughing fit. Um, anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. So... Like I said, I'm not sure if Omniverse is going to go this route of the darkness and shit and showing bodies and death. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But I do appreciate that the show is not is like still skirting around certain things because it's not a TV 14 show. But they're showing that this is we're trying. They're trying to make it as real as possible. Or make it feel as real as possible with everything that they're doing with aliens and all that shit. But it's handled. It's being handled pretty well, in my opinion. Um, interesting to see Edel again clockwork which i don't think we've heard clockworks voice before um until this episode i don't know for sure but i uh interesting and also seeing ben being passed out because usually when ben passes out and gets knocked out or something as an alien he reverts back to himself so the fact that he did in his clockwork was interesting maybe i'm misremembering that but i just like i don't remember that happening too often where ben just gets like passes out and shit and um and he's still the alien right just not used to really seeing that too much. But anyways, I'm done. I'm going to go before I have a coughing and fit again just in case. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy the reaction. Had a good time with this episode. Pretty dark shit. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.